Hello everyone, my name is Vicky. I'm here with Clarity Gaming and I'm here at Red Bull Battlegrounds New York with DJ Weed. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. Okay, so I do have a few questions for you. Um, before we ask about your career, um, I guess it is about your career, how did you actually start in the esports community? Well, I started as a player, actually, um, and a lot of people think that I was just this caster who fell out of the sky, but, um, you know, I was, uh, I was grinding eight to ten hours a day for many years in Quake 3. Uh, I, of course, I played Quake and Quake 2, but it was Quake 3 where I realized that, you know, hey, I've been playing this, you know, this game now for three versions. Like, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. Like, let's play it competitively. So we kind of started to do that in Quake 2, but Quake 3 was it was such a different game. It had a much more robust community. Uh, the internet was really starting to sort of take shape around that time, so it was easier to organize players and, and games via IRC. So uh, that's how I kind of got into it. I mean, it was, it, it was all player first. So uh, I did a little bit of coverage back in the day, but uh, it, it mostly, mostly player. Speaking of Quake, um, you said you play a lot of Quake. How uh, did you ever play StarCraft before you became caster? So uh, it's it, uh, that's actually a great question. I played very little of StarCraft. Like how I learned StarCraft was through Tasteless, um, and the reason why is because early on. And we would travel to events, he would be casting StarCraft, I'd be casting Quake or Unreal or Counter-Strike or something else. So, you know, he would, I mean, obviously seeing StarCraft over and over, I watched a lot of it. And then it was eventually like, Nick, you need to like, you need to just break this shit down for me. Like, can you, can you do that? And, uh, and so like, I think just watching, observing, getting the chance to see amazing players like time and time again was how I kind of got into it. It was not until I played StarCraft 2 that I realized that I was such an idiot for not playing StarCraft because I, you know, I was that Quake guy, like I couldn't go a day without playing a game of Quake and now I sort of feel like I can't really go a day without playing a game of StarCraft and I do feel like I missed out on something big there and I, I also wish I would play just so I could be better than I am now but um, that's, that's kind of, so I didn't really play Brood War all that much. I played a few games but not like I play StarCraft and it was, it was truly sort of being exposed to other esports events is how I got into it originally. Okay, so what actually made you um, choose the path of casting as opposed to like other positions or even even maybe pro gaming? So the re the biggest reason was uh, just simply because I ha I had to get a job. Um, I, I mean I don't I don't know what else to say. Like when you are sort of a you know just out of fresh out of college kid and and you know you know you can get a job. You got some like room to work with. Like that was really great for being able to practice six, ten hours a day, um, you know, then the bills start rolling in and you're like, man, I have to like grow up a little bit. So when I got a job, it was one of those things where I couldn't leave esports. I mean, it wasn't really esports at all, really, but it was just like I, I, I want to compete. I want to at least be involved with the tournaments. And, and so that's how I sort of got into the casting thing. And I just realized how much I loved it. Um, it, it was just something that, you know, I like to entertain. I like to talk to a crowd, even if back then it would be like 25 to 100 people. Um, it was just something that I, I think I almost fell into. And then I loved it so much that I just kept on going and going and going. I did that for several years. And then in 2002, that's when I got my uh, first first opportunity to like travel overseas to Korea and actually cast a, a tournament there and I mean at that point I was pretty much like hooked for life so. Okay so you've worked for several Red Bull events this is not your mm -hmm. first um, I mean two questions how are you enjoying this one so far and um, I mean how do, how do you feel about their involvement in esports in general? So I've loved this event so far. I mean, this one's especially great because you've got all of the champions uh, that are here uh, and the WC, the, the previous WCS champion. Um, that you know that that makes it automatically like uh, it just it's nice because you know that every player deserves to be here um, and uh, and you know will showcase an incredible talent. Uh, you know, as far as Red Bull's contribution, it, it's something that has been really great because you know. I, I really hope that people can see it, you know, through the broadcast or they're here, but they care.
care a lot about what's happening here. They care a lot about the players. And as you know, like Red Bull's been involved with other uh, other athletes, uh, whether that just be regular athletes, extreme sports athletes, etc. And so they really approach it in the same fashion. And and I think that. Uh, uh, Taking that approach has really uh, been something that has been missing from esports. It's unique, and the players will even tell you that you know the environment's great. Like they they care about making sure that we're practiced before we go on, and and that that we're taken care of so that we can just focus on playing. And you know, this is something that I would love to see other uh, other companies adapt. But the other thing too is that Red Bull sort of makes these events their own, and and uh, with that they give us sort of the freedom to have fun with it. Um, you know keep it entertaining, make it not only about the players and the great games they're playing, but also the community, who's getting involved, and uh, that's been great. So it, it's been a real pleasure to be involved with all the training grounds and all the Red Bull battlegrounds, and uh, you know, being here in New York City for this one, especially with the players that we've got, it's been phenomenal. Not to mention we are in one of the most popular venues in New York City. Um, okay, so moving forward, you recently was on the analyst desk for one of um, what's known as one of the biggest StarCraft events, BlizzCon. How was that experience for you? Uh, it was really great. Um, at my first BlizzCon event was back in 2005, and uh, it's kind of crazy because, you know, Todd, who is also on the desk, was actually playing in that first Warcraft 3 tournament that we broadcasted, so it's just, every once in a while you have this moments where you're like, man, like, either I'm really old or this is just kind of crazy because, like, uh, to see people move from you know one place to another or be involved with esports for that long so it was nice to be able to uh, take that role I was I was very honored that that Blizzard you know uh, had the faith in me to, to do that and kind of control you know Jeff and Todd on the on the the desk uh, but it was also different because normally I am at, at the caster desk so um, it was, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed it. it. It was nice, and it allowed me to sort of uh, play a different role. So I really thought it was great. Um, I mean, I, I won't lie, like, we had the best seat in the house because we always just got to watch the games and then talk about them afterwards. So um, it was really great, and it was cool to be a part of, uh, you know, the culmination of, of WCS as a whole after, after a great year. Okay, and I have to ask, um, we haven't seen much of your casting this year. What have you really been up to? Well, um, so I've been working a lot uh, at Twitch. I work full time at Twitch. Um, there's a lot of projects that I've been working on, so I, I've been dedicating a lot of uh, time to that. Um, you know, and also I think that WCS uh, coming in and a lot of the focus going to WCS, you know, uh, the casters were like with specific organizations uh, where I live and whatnot. You know, I don't have the luxury of necessarily being able to say, hey, I can cast you for these few weeks and stuff. So I did definitely take a back seat but you know I traveled a lot in 2012 and it felt pretty good to just sort of get some nice family time and, and focus on work a little bit obviously the one more game TV shows are still going on I've started a few other shows with JP like 8 bits and and doing uh, one of the role play series that he does so you know I've just kind of been having fun making content and 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 uh, and, and you know just taking it easy at home but um, you know, it's nice at the end of the year that I've gotten a chance to do like several events back to back. And I, I mean, I, 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 I love casting, so I'll always be there. But I feel like as I definitely get a little bit older and start to focus on other projects, like I'll probably, probably just do a little bit less, you know. So um, the, the travel also, travel can be crazy. So you gotta be careful out there. For any aspiring casters out there, be ready when travel because it's, it, can be, it can be rough, so. Speaking about WCS, um, I mean, you recently heard of the WCS 2014 changes. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, I uh, part of me has to see how it's gonna how it's gonna play out. I there's several things that I like about it um, because you know I was one of those guys that was like, okay, I've got to schedule my whole day around trying to catch this and then this and then this. And I think that they're gonna spread it out a little bit more. That will make it easier. I think this will also have a great adverse effect on community tournaments and other organizations that want to run tournaments because they're going to have less things that they're going to conflict with, uh, more flexibility as far as that's concerned. Um, but I think that 2013 was a learning uh, process for not only the players and the organizations but also Blizzard. I'd like to think that some of the changes they made are really going to help out in, in some of the areas that people uh, maybe weren't as comfortable with. But um, you know, overall, I, I think 
the tournament at the at the end was sort of a, a really great showcase of like how this all can come together and how amazing it can be. So um, I hope that the changes that they make will just elevate that even more uh, in 2014. Okay, and we're here on day two. That's the last day. Is there anything specific that you're actually looking forward to? Um, so, I, I mean, I, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, how well Scarlett can do. She played amazing yesterday. Would love to see her potentially make it to the finals. But there's also this uh, scenario of um, SOS versus parting, which would be last year's WCS winner versus this year's WCS winner. That's a kind of cool story. So um, if that happens, I won't be upset. But of course, you know, MC is pretty amazing too. He would like another Battlegrounds win. So, um, you know, any of these scenarios play out, I'll be a happy man. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. We definitely look forward to seeing you up there. Is there any last words you want to say? No, just uh, thanks for uh, interviewing me. And hopefully you'll be watching the Red Bull Battlegrounds New York City. And uh, good luck to the final four participants. Thank you very much. Thank you.